Now that we have an understanding of fairly simple perspective and its application to theater design, we are going to talk about moving the picture plane or the true measurement area somewhere different in our picture. As we use the plaster line or the proscenium opening as the picture plane in external perspective and our design happened principally behind that plane, internal perspective reverses that. It will put the picture plane at the back of the image and force the design forward, enlarging it and wrapping around the viewer. This is a perfect approach for doing black box theater, thrust theater, or theater in which the audience is a lot closer and a lot more involved in the scenic design. This is the Margots Theater, Black Box Theater, at Brigham Young University. You'll note the four entries, two on one side, two on the other. Let me add in the risers and chairs for an audience. This theater holds 150 seats and therefore it's configured in several ways. Right now it's in kind of a thrust mode, and with this mode we're going to add a scenic design. You'll note the back wall with a couple of windows, there's a door staged left, there are furniture pieces that we'll talk about later as we look at this design. We'll um, kind of gray out the audience in the theater for right now so we can principally see the scenic design, but now it's time to actually add a grid which is not unlike what we did in external perspective. We added a grid so that we could then turn that grid into a perspective grid on which to draw the rest of the scenic design. You'll note that we have labeled all the lines A through K going upstage to downstage and <clears throat> 0 to 17 going stage right to stage left. It's important that for simplicity in your design that you make sure that your grid rides one of its lines on the back wall of your scenic piece. That's going to be the picture plane. So you'll note that line B follows the front of the back wall. The nice thing about internal perspective is that I can now add my station point somewhere within the theater and determine how I would like to view this design. Note that as soon as I place a seat, um, I have found myself within the space and I can use that as a line onto the grid on which I'll put the vanishing point later on as we start working from the front view. So currently we're sitting on line three of the grid. This represents the viewpoint of that audience member, the view range we might say, You'll note that what we're looking at stage right is going to be fairly straight on for that view, and things that are over on the far stage left side of the design uh, will be a little bit more distorted because of the perspective that we're going to use. It's up to you. You could choose any of these seats for doing this uh, design. If you used one of the side seats and saw things in an angle, you'd need to go into a two-point perspective. But we're going to do a fairly straight-on single-point perspective for this exercise. So, here's our picture plane, which is the very back wall, and the design will all happen in front of that. So I'm going to add in the two windows and give the full detail of that back wall. This is my picture plane. I'm going to back off and show you now that I can superimpose that grid has gone on the stage and now it's running up the picture plane. So here is the same 0 through 17 and there is a dot representing us on line 3 at this point. We'll talk about that. That'll become our vanishing point. But um, my set works fairly well within this grid, which is nice. I made this grid every two feet so um, you get a feeling for how a grid will work for us. And obviously, these lines represent the same lines that are on the floor. They're just running up the stage and then on back up the scenic design. Reminder, we're sitting on line three. I could then do the same grid running up the wall in horizontal lines. So now I fully gridded my picture plane and I can use that for measuring things because everything on this wall is at exact measurement 
and then I can move things away from that picture plane I'm using this picture plane as true measurement. We're only going to use the verticals right now. We don't want to put in the horizontals to confuse you. I've backed off a little bit more and added a horizon line and give us our vanishing point on that horizon line. This reminds us where we are sitting. That horizon line, interestingly, is actually where I really would be sitting in that theater. I know that the rise of those steps is eight inches. I know that when I'm sitting down, I'm basically this many inches from the floor and I can total that all up. And that is actually the height of a person sitting in that seat, in that theater space, set by that horizon line. And I'm very specific that I'm on line three. So I am physically going to be drawing this design perspective from that seat in the theater. We'll back off it a little bit more. I've got the full grid now because we need to start talking about one more dimension. We've got the vertical and we've got the horizontal. We also need to start talking about, again, the distance of the audience member from the theater design. And when I'm doing a flat drawing, I have to represent that as I did in external perspective on the flat surface. What we're going to do is continue that grid, the vertical grid with the horizontal lines, past its actual dimension where it stopped on the floor and drop down the number of grid items that are actually physically on the floor. You'll see how we're going to use that to our advantage in doing a perspective of this. I'll leave that there now and go back to my vanishing point that's on line three and I'm going to draw from that point through each of the bottoms of the 0 through 17 grid, lines that come out and force the floor lines that run up and down stage. So I've now represented part of the floor grid by using the vanishing point. Reminder, here is our station point, and we're going to actually drop that down in its dimension, and I could actually use the distance of that seat to that back wall if I would like to. And what's kind of recommended in this system is that that should be about two or three times the height of the back wall down from the back wall. So there's my station point, and I'll put back in the horizontals to remind us that they're there, put back in the what we call the depth measurements, and I'm going to now draw from the station point through each of those lines that are on the depth measurement until it touches the outside of one of the grid lines coming from the vanishing point. And I'll complete that for each of those lines. This now has superimposed that grid system onto the forced perspective line. You'll notice how large it is as it gets closer to me and how narrow it gets as I move back towards the picture plane. Then, at every point where those depth perception lines touch that outside grid line on the right, I will then draw horizontal across the grid and complete that for each of those intersections. And then I will label those to match the grid line that I had on my original floor plan. If I now remove those lines, you'll see that I now have my floor grid completed using my dropped depth lines from my station point to determine each of those cross lines running from one side of the stage to the other. I can continue on with this concept. I still have my horizon line and my vanishing point, and I can use those out through the top of my back grid to determine the full box of this scenic design. And I can use that vanishing point to help establish all the grid on the side and then run all of the horizontal lines up and across and up on the other side. Now we have a full boxed grid on which to draw our scenic design. The first thing that I'm going to do is add the two wall extensions that are on the side of the set. You'll remember that when we had the back wall that's riding on line B, we had a wall on stage right that just comes out at an angle, and we had a wall on stage left that came at an angle and it has a door unit in it. I have now superimposed those on the floor using the grid system so I know where they would lie. What I'm going to do is use those lines to draw in, as I've done in red, 
lines that now establish a vanishing point for each of those wall pieces. So if I look at the one that's uh, on your left, or stage right, and draw a line out, I'll eventually hit the horizon line and establish a vanishing point right. And then the other wall gives me a vanishing point left, which is a little further out, using the measurement of the back wall, which establishes my height, I'm then going to use those new vanishing points to draw the tops of those walls. So on the left, you see that I've used that new vanishing point right and drawn a red line up and established the top of the next wall and stopped it with a vertical line. And I've used those lines to help establish the door and some of the detail on each of those walls. If I remove all those lines, there is my finished wall unit using the grid system and the vanishing points of the left and the right walls. Next, I would just map in all my furniture pieces. I did that again by going back to my grid and looking where all those sofas, tables, everything matched in the grid and then bringing it back and laying it out point by point and drawing lines between to establish each of those pieces on the floor. Now that I've got each of those pieces on the floor, I need to be able to establish their height. Because I have a grid system on each of the walls, it makes it very simple. I'm just going to take a, a line from each of the back corners of the couch horizontally over to the side wall and then draw up on the wall until I reach the right height. I've established that my couch is less than four feet, so there are my vertical lines, and I've used a line coming out from the back corner to help establish that height and put in a box to represent where the couch would be if it were sitting against the wall. Now, please note, while I'm using that side wall as my measurement, it's not really the picture plane and it's not true measurement. It's a bit distorted because the back wall is true measurement. That's why I've drawn the dotted line because that comes from the true measurement point out, dot, 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 to where the top of that couch is going to be. Let's draw out lines to establish the um, tops of that couch as it comes out. Just horizontal lines out from that frame on the wall. And I'm going to use the bottom of the couch to establish vanishing points. So I've reestablished that horizon line out to where we need to see it. And that helps me determine the tops of my couch. And there it is, all boxed in for us. So let's step back just a little bit and see that in true space. Remove all the lines. There is a box that represents where the sofa will sit. Let's use that same system to find vanishing points and draw in the box and also pull that over to the side, measure its height. Same system, I boxed in the chair. I use that same system to box in a table at the back and two plant stands at the back and a round table downstage. With all of that established, now I can draw in the furniture pieces within those boxes. I can add all the detail I need to to the rendering. Again, reminder of how our floor plan looked, how our finished pieces look now that I pulled all the lines away. And now I have a complete drawing in a one-point internal perspective.